Holbrook New Media. This is Jeffrey K. Holbrook. Welcome to the audio feed from HolbrookNewMedia.com. Today, Jeff and Jeffrey, the weekly catch up. We hope you enjoy the audio version. If you want to see what we look like, I will embed the video for this episode at HolbrookNewMedia.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Blanchard. And I'm Jeffrey K. Holbrook, and this is the Weekly Catch-Up. And we're back, and I nearly forgot what the name of the show was because we've had... Uh, with me with work and that we've had this is two weeks we've had a rest haven't we so yeah i think three three out of the last four uh weeks i think we weren't able to do it but um like you say things happen usually uh my uh, the rougher time to get a hold of me would be in our winter time uh around mm. uh, you know with the postal service and all of the mailings and everything like that plus the time changes to where it's a little tighter crunch if i end up having to work overtime so you know it'll be a little a little more iffy for me later but hey schedules happen and that's what happens and the thing is if you work and that pays the bills and that's got to be number one <laughs> uh, yeah takes... I, <laughs> I agree today though is a quite the momentous occasion for me oh well the reason why is okay i have been audio podcasting for about three years mm -hmm. and I have done um, probably more than 150, 160 episodes, but in any one series, the highest I've ever reached is 50 episodes. Oh, so this is number 51, 51. isn't it? 51. So, so I'm, 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 I'm feeling kind of smug right now, actually. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, like you say, my, my first uh, podcast was a expected to be 50 episodes and so you know then it ended just like uh, it should have and then we got to 50 here and it was like two more weeks and i'm thinking oh you know <laughs> and trying trying to get it good he's not coming back <laughs> you know, <I'm> thinking, <laughs> he's not coming <laughs> back <laughs> you know the curse of the 50th episode yeah <laughs> but, well, see, the thing is, thing is with like you said it's with work and that but when you when you're rushing around and doing that sometimes when you get back the last thing you want to do as well is to sit there and talk for an hour because you've been talking all day. Like when I had my brother here and racing back from the sitting through peak hour traffic, getting back here, I just didn't feel like that after that. And then well, I had uh, at work then was just talking all day and that's fine. I don't mind that, but left work a bit later than normal and uh, still visiting mum. And then I thought, Oh, that's the last thing you want to do. And, and hey, I want to do this because it's fun. If it's in, if it's not fun anymore, I stop doing it. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I agree completely. Like you say, I was able to, uh, I mean, for the audio side of things, I come up with, a, you know, uh, I don't really have too much trouble coming out with some other content. I actually had my little brother uh, into being my co-host last week. I just brought him here in the room with me, set up another mic. And uh, we actually talked about uh, computer security and internet security, and um, actually had had a good conversation. We actually went a little bit of overtime compared to the way we do on Jeff and Jeffrey. I was uh, Did you do just audio, uh, audio. audio. Yeah, like you say, I I haven't been streaming any video on my own. Now, I do have the the YouTube channel, but I have not streamed anything live to that. Um, but like you say, just uh, just the the audio podcast. You know, there are people out there that are kind of expecting things, you know, uh, once a week. So I always make make sure there is some, uh, um, you know, content for, for every time. And like I said, last time, I think we went about an hour and 15 on, uh, oh, yeah, with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing is once you start chatting and that, and as I said, you, if you're not thinking about it, well, it doesn't matter if it's interesting, just keep going and keep going. So, mm -hmm. but you should try that, you know, we have a on the youtube just to see how you go with just a, a little pod just one a moment with jeff or something like that <laughs> with the, one of your quotes and, and just try that because i think that's opened up the world because i mean a lot of the time you used to have to have a streaming service mm -hmm. and like justin tv was about the last one that you could get that was reasonable and free apart from the blab but mm -hmm. before that and then any other one uh there's i think it's Ustream to get it you, there's a free version of that but it's so intrusive with the adverts. Like we will be talking, go, 
Oh, hi, Jeff. And this week at Mega Mart, you can get this. And then comes over the top of these adverts. And then all of a sudden, it's back down. Oh. And then it just sort of interrupts you with these horrible adverts. Whereas if you pay $1,500 a month, you hmm. don't get it. Oh, hey. But that's, <laughs> but I mean, it's just that's, to me, no, you, that's fine. That's not much if you want to be doing it properly all the time for that. But something like this YouTube, just to be able to, like the likes of me and you just be able to do a little bit like that. It's been opened it up really well. Cause before, you used to have to uh, be a podcaster that had so many thousands of followers, didn't you, before they'd give you the, the broadcast rights. But now the uh, I think they've figured out that there's a lot more people who just want to get there and have a chat. So well, it just, just marvels me, this technology still. One one of the things that I'm, I'm really surprised about is the YouTube, or not YouTube, but the uh, Facebook thing. Mm -hmm. uh, because I mean, I know people that know absolutely nothing about technology and they're mm. getting, uh, you know, cause it, it happens live on Facebook. And so since people are already there, they actually find you and watch you live and then it can be replayed all along. And so um, somebody pops on there and like you say, they have no technological anything. No. Yeah. They'll get a thousand views that day. Mm. I mean, because yeah, of all the, all the people sharing it and all the things going on, because you're right in the middle, instead of having to come and find you like, like they mm. do a podcast or even something on YouTube, because they're not apt to show you everything. Um, these people who are who are just doing the live streaming, uh, I mean, they're they're getting large audiences in a very very short period of time, and you know, I mean, it's it's amazing because, you know, to be a podcaster, you have to know something about audio and you know, being able to work on the audio and get it up. All this kind of no, they just pick up their phones and they do this, and they've got a thousand views just like that. Yeah, don't <laughs> care. And like I'll, just before the show here, I was trying having a play around with this little lav mic. Mm -hmm. I thought I'll give that a try plugged it in and I thought, oh, I just hated it. So I quickly switched back to the other mic because it just didn't sound right. I thought it might be okay for doing on the camera and outside where there's a lot of noise, but in here it just didn't didn't seem to have the power. And I switched the microphone up, the power on that, but it still didn't seem to make much difference to it anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, to change the subject, I found out something interesting. Um, my friend, Christy, I've known this lady for probably 35 years. I knew her when she was a teenager. Uh, we were both teenagers going to rival schools, you know. Anyway, what happened was she um, was attempting to do an online review for something. Oh, okay. And so she got everything done and then hit send. And all of a sudden it said that they do not allow profanity on their reviews which this woman probably hasn't thought a profane no word in 35 years. <laughs> and so, you know, and so she's like, so she checks what? over it and everything is, you know, okay. And it still won't accept it. So then she changes the word Walmart to other store and it accepts it. <gasps> oh, <laughs> So, so, so Walmart, uh, <laughs> so Walmart, Walmart is now officially a four letter word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, isn't that ridiculous? Cause you just think, what have I said in the, is, is it a profanity? That's we'll, we'll be struck off the YouTube or blockers now. Cause you've said the W word. Yeah. That's, just, <laughs> that's what we're going to call it. The W word. <laughs> Which, who was she doing the review for? It wasn't Amazon, was it? Uh, it wouldn't surprise me, but uh, but I, I don't know. Uh, she didn't say specifically. She just mentioned this on Facebook, and uh, but that was that, that was the thing. It was it was a very specific uh, thing that that a, a profane word was on there. You know, no, we don't allow profanity, and that's the only thing she changed, and it accepted it. Well, it must be that Walmart's got enough money. They pay everybody. Said, "Well, do that." So, if anything, buddy says anything bad against our product or whatever, don't let it come on. Yeah. So they said each you can say you can say you've stopped. We'll give you five hundred dollars. Something like that. <laughs> well, sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, ridiculous, like, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah, it, it it seems to be. But I mean, it it could be done, I guess, as a joke because I know back in the eighties. Uh, when I was running a bulletin board system, um, you know, before just the dial up bulletin board system before the internet was readily available to everyone, um, there was what was called a trash can file. And then there was another file that, uh, you, 
that had various profane words in it that then if those words were used, then the person would be kicked offline. All right. Okay. Yeah. You know, because I mean, it was, and that's been, that was in the eighties with just a simple, mm. you know, original IBM PC type computer. And, um, so, you know, they can, they can do it much better and much, you know, more efficiently now, but all anyone has to do some employee for that company just has to write Walmart in that file. And then if they use that, it'll be considered profanity and it will not accept it. <laughs> oh, well, and I mean, the, the horrible thing is she's probably thinking, somebody's hacked my account mm -hmm. so what somebody said somebody my thing's gone in there and it's it's something else has taken over and is putting all this cursing words and everything under my name but at least it wasn't but that's the first thing you'd think wouldn't it you'd think I haven't said anything. So have, has somebody else been posting under my name or something like that? Yeah, because uh, there was a um, local legislator that I was just looking at uh, uh, his, you know, I, where uh, I mean, there's so many people that end up being you end up being connected to, and a local legislator, and he said that he had been hacked, and if if he had offered anybody some kind of interest free loans or something like that, that that really wasn't him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, he's trying to bribe me. He's offered me an interest free loan and a holiday in the Bahamas. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I mean, they're the sort of things that get people into trouble and. People don't hack accounts to make money, just sometimes to make people's lives are awkward, don't they? They don't yeah. care. They just, they just, it's fun for them. Yeah, it has, to, it has to be somebody who's prominent that enough people will notice. Because if you're going to pull a prank of some kind, then mm. you need a lot of witnesses. You need a lot of people to be shocked by what you've done. And so picking somebody who's not really known is no fun. You really need to have mm a really large audience and you get the most satisfaction out of having a very large audience, you know, it's just like those, these people I see every day you hear them when they they say, Oh, we've got, we're unhackable. And we're, I said, no, I never say that. Cause that's just asking them to come and get you. Isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. Because they said our security system so down well, they will never get through, but n nobody's hundred percent safe. There's always, if there's enough people in the, you vote. The only way you're 100 percent safe is if you're not plugged in anywhere. If you've got no Wi-Fi connection. You've got a freestanding. You've got no internet. You're not doing anything like Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, I mean that's the that's the thing. Last week, whenever uh, my brother was talking about internet security, that's exactly what he said. The only way to be completely, you know, secure as far as the internet goes is just don't be on it. If you're not on it, then they can't get to you. Uh, and oh, we, yeah. we were talking about cameras on various devices that are inside the house and different things. And he said that there's Russian websites uh, that actually just are showing they've hacked into the cameras, like in babies' mm -hmm. rooms and different things in America, and just have these uh, sites that are just streaming these cameras in America that they've hacked through people's security in their homes and, and doing that. And his assertion was, if it can be invented by man, then it can be circumvented by man. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it just goes without saying, if you can do it, mm -hmm. if you can stream it, do it yourself, somebody else can get it either. There's no way, like even when you do on the, on Skype, I'm always thinking no matter what, if we can do this, somebody else can get in there somewhere. Surely there's somebody getting in there. We had an incident uh, last week here was in Melbourne where all of a sudden at 4.30, all the trains stopped. <laughs> all the trains stopped. Wow. We go, all the signal controls failed, so all the trains just stopped dead on the tracks, and no trains were going anywhere for about three hours. Wow. And the, they came out to, oh, no, we haven't been hacked. No, 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 it's impossible. It's a standalone, free-standing system. We thought uh, everybody was saying, how, how much, how silly do you think those people are in the world that, if it's a, one that controls a train system, the signal anything all around the, the city, how can you have one computer? Has it got long wires going <laughs> all the way? There's got to be some network connection that it's going to connecting to another machine that tells the signals what to do. And that they, you can't be all connected up via just a cable. Well, I do know, I do know that uh, trains in America, that they actually use the rails themselves to send signals uh, to that way 
the connection is, you know, it's just kind of a passive uh, current, but they send it through there so they can tell whether there are any breaks in the track. Hmm. And so, well, you know, they, they can tell the conductor whether or not there's actually, whether, you know, the track is whole as you go. And that way you can go as fast as you want to, you know, as fast as they'll let you and, and do it that way. That way you, you know, if there is now somebody could make a break in the track and then do a jumper yeah. <laughs> you know, with a couple of wires and clips or something. And I suppose even, even then, like you said, it's, if it's going through the tracks, Yes, but but that still is a that that would still somebody could still get that, couldn't they? So they could still get into that somewhere along the way if there's yeah, thousands yeah, well, of uh, to to me, I'm guessing I don't know what gauge wire you would need, but you could get a couple of big clips and and take out a section of the track and then clip from one side to the other and keep them think that the track's there. <laughs> well, I stand corrected if if there's somebody can prove that they can have a standalone system that can run that. But uh, to me, whenever you're talking about a standalone system to me it's like a laptop that's all by oh. itself or, or a computer but i'm just thinking if there's a little bloke in an office just running the whole train network like microsoft train simulator yeah said, oh, that I'll could be it yeah. put the boom gates down here, here press that button <laughs> <laughs> and it's just going from a wire to all this through the cable and that but to me still if that signal's going out to somewhere so and it's got to come back and send him some signal back it's got to get there's some i just can't believe that it would be a, a freestanding system but that's what they kept saying it hasn't been hacked but it just seemed uh just seemed very strange that when they uh, at the peak hour and it was just at the most inconvenient time and it's just round about when all these people are getting uh, uh these ransomware things and all that happening uh, but i think that's what's oh no we definitely no no we definitely didn't get hacked but even then, it's like a, these days, you just don't bother. I wouldn't, if I was a company, you'd never say, we haven't been hacked. It's just like when somebody has a black eye, you'd never say you walked into a door, do you? You just say, the wife hit me. <laughs> and then they were, oh, sure. <laughs> but because, I mean, it's. And then they're start, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit the door. We understand. And it's just like, no, we never got hacked. Just leave it. So. <laughs> well, that was one of the topics we had uh, last week too. We were talking about the the supposed rushing hack and hacking of the American presidential election, mm -hmm. and I actually asked the polling people whenever we went there about if these mm -hmm. were hooked up to the internet and things like that. And the machines that they have are completely separated. Mm. Uh, from the internet, each machine is even independent of the other machines, you know, the actual voting computer machines. And then they had something, uh, that was still local that whenever you got done, it actually printed whatever it was. It was almost like the old computer card days and it kind of printed up a card or, you know, put little holes in it or whatever. And then you take that card and slide it into the tabulator and that would actually, um, tabulate your vote. And then it has to be looked at and certified by the secretaries of state of each state. And so the only thing I figured out about any kind of hacking, the only thing that's really been done was, and what's really been alleged, they keep calling it hacking. But what it is, is they were saying that there was a whole bunch of uh, misinformation that was actually yeah. put over the internet that could sway votes in one way or the other. And I said, well, to me, that just sounds like campaigning. <laughs> that's right. It's just, it is said that's what the propaganda out there, somebody's just spreading, a, and that's exactly what they all do. That I know I've been there at election time, and I'm just really amazed at how ferocious they get. I'll be in the car listening to the radio and listening to, oh, she, I'd vote for that lady. I would vote for her. She sounds really good in that. Then five minutes later, oh, God, she's evil, isn't she? Oh, she, why would I vote for her? And that one's so good because they get you because the stories you, they tell and all that. You think, oh, she's voting against that. How could she? And how could he do that? And, and then the next minute you're there, oh, no, I'd vote for them. And because uh, you just, I don't know how anybody can make a real educated choice by listening to all the propaganda because they all sound so damn good and then they rubbish the next the other one so well that you'd think they were the most evil person on earth wouldn't you so, well, I'm, really I mean good. but we have on, on regular tv you have uh, advertisements that are based on one of them is by that one candidate and they're saying how good they are then the next one is by the other candidate that says how evil they are and then it goes mm. back and the next one's by the, so you might have four in a row 
that are bouncing back and forth talking about how good or how bad. But what happens is there are no bills that just have one thing in them. They no. have <laughs> hundreds of separate items and they scour these bills saying so-and-so voted against money for veterans. And there was this one bill that was about building a bridge over in a certain county or certain state and somebody tacked on at the end uh, some kind of a thing to give ten dollars to veterans, and yeah, and, and then and then you know they never saw it, never knew about it, and they vote the bridge down because it's just a big pork barrel, as they call it, and 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 uh, they find that, and then they just drive it home that they they voted against money for veterans. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, honesty, it, it, there is no honesty at all in this. It's all lies. All you can do is look and see what they actually did. Look at the votes yourself and look at the bills yourself. Now, there is a there is a um, podcast, believe it or not. It's called Congressional Dish. And what they do is actually read the content of the bills that are going through Congress. Um, it makes it, uh, it makes it to where you can actually find out what it is without having to do all the reading yourself and you can, and she actually reads the content of the bills. And so you can find out what's, what's actually in them. Because this is that you said they, if, when they want something to, it's like, I watched the, that thing like, yes, prime minister, that English one. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, saying, uh, says, well, well, they, had a had a survey and everybody was for that he said well of course there would be he said it all depends what you put in the bill and how you ask the question exactly because he, he was saying there was something he said well what do you mean he said well like conscription he says he says are you afraid of, of somebody murdering you in your beds at night are you afraid to walk the streets yes would you be in favor of conscription yes and he said, but if you want the no answer, he said, would you like to see your children go off to war and be killed? Would you like to do this? Oh, exactly. no, no. But as I said, it all depends how you phrase it. It's the same question, but it all depends how you phrase it. And, and that's what a lot of politics is about, isn't it? It's just how do you, you phrase it? Getting back to the hacking, we had also as well, like you said, not necessarily, as I said, to me, hacking is when somebody gets in and maliciously gets the information, does something with it or, or or gets right into your system. But we had the Australian census that goes every four years. And this year, they usually send you a form and then come and pick it. It's all you to do, all the ticks, all the 50 or 60 questions. But this year, they said, we're going to do it all electronic. It said, if the Americans can do it on yeah, for the voting electronically, we can do the census electronically. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, comes uh, and they and they said, oh, and before the uh, the night came, they asked the people. So now, are you sure with asking all the people to do the census to get on the internet to your site all at once? Are you sure that you can handle it? Oh, that will be no worries. We've got no problems. We've checked that. We've had load testing on the site. There's never going to be a problem. Not going to be a problem whatsoever. <laughs> and come census night, and this was the thing you had to do or else you'd get fined $175 for not doing it. <sighs> census night, when he said, nah, this is the night you've got to fill it in. Site not available. <laughs> Site not available. Site not available for wasn't available for three days, <laughs> and so they they reckon oh well, it was hacked. It was overseas hackers, but what it was, it wasn't hackers. It was just somebody. What do they call it? It's uh, there's a name for that where there was just bombarding the site. Oh, a uh, brute force uh, attack. Yeah, that's right. So there was just doing that. So that wasn't to me. It wasn't a hack. But even then, I think to me, I thought maybe it was just a convenient excuse that the system couldn't handle it because the thing was uh, they didn't ask the whole population. Like, I mean, they, yeah, we're not as big as a uh, population as America, but if you ask 10 million people, I suppose that's what who had to, would have to do at least all at once on a, on a night to get on the internet to a site to do it. Surely that's not going to be possible. And we found out after that, that, uh, we could we could have logged in earlier and done it, but no, they kept saying, no, don't do it. It's got to be on that night. 
got to be on that night when we found out oh no you could have filled it in days well why wait because we're all sat there waiting for you know the tuesday night after six when we could so everybody was on that at the same time so it took weeks to do it because instead of doing it all over the night but if the but it was the same thing as the hacking thing oh no we've got it won't have any problem definitely not and when they are oh, so oh even when i heard that i thought it's not going to work because if you're definitely not going to do it somebody will do something to uh, uh, to make it sure that you didn't do it but we got through it eventually but that's what the, they were talking about for the elections doing it and then they said oh well if that's what they do how could you possibly do an election through electronic means but yeah to me it's it's all like you said with your machines they're they're, they're machines but they're all freestanding all it does is punch a card out really and records the information it doesn't doesn't connect to anything else but then again slot machines are independent machines the old ones and they could rig them couldn't they <laughs> so without, oh yeah yeah never... mechanically mechanically you could rig but they actually printed i mean that people had complained yes. about that so they actually printed on your card that you could see who you voted for in these mm, situations they had a little little dot things too but then beside of it it was printed that you could actually physically see then you physically took that card and put it into the tabulator yourself no one else was allowed to touch it Whenever you got done, you put it in there yourself. Well, the first thing that would happen in America if they had a thing like your census deal there, the first thing that would happen is a whole bunch of conspiracy theorists would decide that um, um, it was a big government conspiracy to make sure that everybody had to pay $170. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, sound, that, sound, that does sound about right, doesn't it? So, yeah, the, the, they didn't care about that, but they wanted to uh, just increase revenue. Oh, yeah, that, but yeah. it was a bit, a bit like we had um, we had another one where there was, uh, we have the federal elections where it's compulsory to vote. If you don't vote here, you get fined, and that's about a $75 fine. So hmm. if you don't, uh, you, you don't, but you just get done but then we had a lot of problems where we had people mailing votes because you can do a mail vote if you're not going to be in the country or you're going to be unavailable on the the polling day so a lot of people were getting fine well i registered my vote i did that oh no the post lost it and they said if i said the, the next to nothing gets lost in the post these days like you know what it's and as i said these things are uh, we've got prepaid things. We've got the looking out for them, and they said, "How come everybody in that household posted theirs? If we're all going there, five people posted them, and they only happened to just lose yours." And as I said, a lot of people got got these things where the, the, they got fined because they said, "Well, you didn't didn't attend." But that wasn't a federal one; it was just for the local one. So that was they were more vicious for the local one than the where. Well, the they 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 want more money. <laughs> That's what, well, that's what I thought. I thought they're they're on about uh, the money, but here it's it says it's it's not necessarily it is compulsory to vote, but we say it's not necessarily compulsory to vote. It's compulsory to go to the voting station and get your name crossed off the list. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, because if you don't get you just get the name crossed off and you can you can just fold up your paper and put it in there. There's nothing stopping you from voting if you don't want to. But if you to me though, if you've made I I, I agree with it people voting because i think you've got to have your word and there's no way you can moan and groan at least every but most people here if we moan and groan at least we put a bit of paper in and try to say we wanted one or the other whereas i think if people moan and groan and they don't and they had the opportunity i think they should just keep quiet <laughs> so. hey, well i agree with that one one of the things you find though is that if the government needs something Oh, mm. then you're going to be forced. It's going to be compulsory and they'll do it to you, whatever it is. But if it's something that you've been promised by the government. Oh, no, that's different. Yes. They will completely <laughs> pull the carpet right out from under you. Right now, Mr. Trump's budget has some things included that are supposed to do some things about postal workers. Back in the 80s, um, President Reagan and the Congress and everybody bailed out Social Security at that point by suddenly changing the postal retirement because the civil service people did not pay social security and right before i was hired they actually changed the retirement so that 
all the postal workers from that point on, you know, would start paying Social Security. So suddenly several hundred thousand people were paying into Social Security that weren't before. So they reduced the salaries of the newer postal workers and changed all that and they got it set up. Well, the original intent was that postal workers under the civil service plan before could retire at age 55 if you had uh, 30 years in. Okay. Mm. So I've been at the Postal Service now. August next month will be 31 years. Oh. I could actually, but what they did, they changed it for the new system to where um, since you started paying Social Security, they reduced the amount of retirement you get and you're based and you're forced, you know, Social Security is part of your retirement plan. So you can't get Social Security until 62. Oh, so the system is set up to where you could retire at 55 and suddenly you had to work till 62. Well, to keep that from happening, one of the provisions they did was to calculate from what your social security will be at 62 and mm -hmm. give you 75% of that, not from social security, but from the postal service itself, but raising the age slightly a little bit at a time. So at age 56, I am able to retire with uh, 33 years of service and mm -hmm. that supplement would go on until social security kicked in and then i would have that and so i could still retire you know with a similar type of a thing mm -hmm. although they are raising the age well i've had that promise for 31 years mm -hmm. suddenly in the trump budget with no preamble or any reason why it was done even though our pay was reduced and we've paid this for all this time they're just going to take that away a thousand dollars a month. That's that's a big thing, is isn't it as well? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it it could. It's going to make it for a lot of people to where they yeah they'll be eligible to retire, but they can't retire because even though we've done our part for all these years, hmm. paying into Social Security, having everything reduced, our retirement reduced, everything reduced. At the last second, they pull the rug out from around you. Now, this again, this is Trump's um, budget that he's submitting. And, of course, it has to go through the ringer of the Congress and all that kind of stuff and see what they do. But you're going to have to have several hundred thousand angry postal workers that will be voting a well, bunch of people out if, if, yeah. if they run something like that through. And to me, I, I, you know, I don't know the as much as you about the political side, but I would not be picking a fight with the postal workers. Uh, probably would not be a be a good idea. Now, one of the agreements with the new with back in 1970 was that uh, we are not allowed to strike, so they can't paralyze the country and strike and stuff like that. Which actually, that's worked out well for me. I've been fine, but. Um, it's just that, um, you know, there was something in my dad's retirement. He was he was also a postal worker, but he was under the civil service. And there was this thing where they said, okay, if you don't pay taxes now, then you'll have to pay them when you draw it out. But if you do pay taxes now, you won't have to. Well, my dad said, well, I'll just go ahead and pay those taxes for all these years. And then, excuse me, and then I won't uh, have to worry about it later. Well, right before he retired, the government oh, changed it and he had to pay taxes again. You can pretty much guarantee that as long as the government gets what it wants right now, that they will turn it back on you later and get it from you again. <laughs> I mean, and, it, and that's what the thing is. It's all, and it always seems to come around when it's your turn, doesn't it? Like you yeah. said, it wouldn't come around when you was, had ten years in, and mm -hmm. it didn't affect you that much because you think, well, no matter what they say, it could change again. It could turn around to the other way. But when it's, uh, but you can't retire now and get your entitlements, can you? You're not quite well, um, no, I, I can't do it right now. They were talking about this starting in 2018. Well, uh, 2020 is about when I was going to retire. You know, that, mm. that at age 56, I'll be 54 in September. And so, mm. um, you know, right around, uh, let's see, 17, 18, 19, no, 2019, I could, I could actually retire. So I would be like a year or two out uh, from when they take it away. And then, whether I can retire, okay, take the average middle class person and take one thousand dollars out of their budget. Mm, whether whether that's yeah. American or or Australian, yeah. that is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I mean, and just just take it with no no compensation, no. Yeah, and for thirty one years we've paid all this extra money. We've had things reduced so that they could bail out the Social Security, and then at the last second they just want to take it. 
uh, mm. promised gone. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's just that. Yes, with all all the vote, as I said, if you have postal votes, when they come in next time, they'll go to the wrong candidate next time, won't they? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to think so. That's probably, uh, but I have a feeling, especially uh, where they're working on the repeal of Obamacare and, and they're trying to come up with something, they come up with some things and all of a sudden I know the representative, uh, the senator from, uh, one of the senators I know specifically from West Virginia said that she can't vote for this because of there are specific things that are, hurting it takes away uh, programs for uh, drug um, rehab and several things that are of a concern to west virginians and so she can't vote for it it looks like it's just completely collapsing um but one of the things we've noticed with obamacare is that uh, they have restricted how you can get drugs um and, you know because they're so worried about um you know any type of abuse and stuff like that yeah. So I, I went to the doctor the other day and they had, you know, just a well visit and they had the normal thing and there was a, a drug that I was getting. The regulations had changed so much because I, I, I need a knee replacement and I'm having a lot of arthritic pain and I don't know if you can see the deformity in my hands. See you know, see this finger hand. here and this one here won't hardly bend and, you know, so I'm having some pretty good deformity but uh, and a lot of pain. And so there was a a drug that I, that they had prescribed to me the last time. And, uh, you know, I was taking it sparingly. I wasn't even taking it as much as what they'd recommended. And the regulations had changed to where now, if I want this pain, I mean, they're, they're basically setting up to where family practitioners are not relieving anyone's pain ever, oh. even though that's part of the Hippocratic Oath, they're not doing it. Because, so what happens is people who illicitly are wanting to use drugs illegally are going to get them anyway. But the people like me that need it for some pain relief have to come to the doctor every three months and be, of all things, drug tested. I get oh, put on a government stupid. list. Okay, I mean, this wasn't some highfalutin drug. I mean, it isn't. Some, I don't feel any different when I take it other than it just dulls the pain a little bit. It doesn't make me woozy. There's nothing exciting drug-wise about it. It's just something that was, you know, making my hands work you know, to where they weren't so painful, but they have got such stringent regulations and that the family practitioners are afraid to do anything. There's also the case that, um, you know, the uh, Medicaid, Medicare, my wife's disabled. And so, you know, she has this uh, a supplement based on her disability through Social Security. Well, my insurance pays first and then the Medicaid or whatever it is pays. Well, they were only paying 10% of what the whole total was that they were eligible that they would pay because my insurance pays so well. Well, all of a sudden, oh. you know, so mine would so pay first and then they would, were paying a fraction of what was, you know, they had pledged to pay based on the plan. All of a sudden, we're paying deductibles when we didn't have oh. any before. Oh. And that was a direct result of Obamacare. Um, because, and so I, one of the things I couldn't figure out is how people who are on a fixed income have Medicaid or whatever it is, and they are making the choices already they advertised for Obamacare that, yeah, these people are having to make choices between food and, and their medications. And then they make these same people pay $150, $200 deductibles mm, for serious. their medical stuff when they were paying nothing before. I mean, I mean, how is this supposed to help? <laughs> Because that, that, that's exactly what we like people see here. They see, gee, the Americans are strange. Why they want to get rid of a, a Obamacare? Because they just keep thinking it's like our system. And our, as I said, well, no, ours was working because our one, the similar way to, I would suppose it would be Obamacare, but like 1% of my salary goes to. The, you know, to, for that, the, the national sort of health insurance. It's a single, a single payer system is what they call it. This isn't that. It's a modification of the existing thing with the eventual hope that they can run commercial insurance out of business and force mm -hmm. everyone onto government health care such as you have. I mean, that's, that's, they admitted at the beginning that was their plan all along was to basically end insurance as we know it. But they, they made so many changes to healthcare itself, but without the government 
of w- right. without it being your kind, they just meddled with it, added way more regulations, and made everything much more expensive. And then fined I, people for not who couldn't afford insurances before. They gave they, I, they gave I, them fines. <laughs> I mean, for not having insurance. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it really made no sense at all to me. I think as well because I think like here. We, we have the like the state one that goes for off your salary, but if you haven't, if you're not working in that, you still get covered. Mm-hmm. But I think we've got a really good system because nobody nobody gets left behind here. Right. And, and sometimes if you do on that, you're better off on that than having a, a, a you know some of the measly other extra insurance. Like I have uh, the normal one, but I just have a little extra to cover me for little things that you, that might not be covered, like elective things like dental. If you want to have sure. something like that, because it's not not uh, uh, an essential. But then again, with the normal thing, if I and like mums had it and, and dad and everybody, when they got sick, everything was taken care of. But they pay you pay for it in your salary. But the the, the pusher here as well for everybody to get some private insurance as well. But then the government subsidises it mm-hmm. to give you thirty percent of it back, so you're not paying as much. But it's, you know, I think it's, it gets like everywhere. It's always expensive for families because you want the top cover because if your kids fall downstairs and do that, the, you want that little bit extra care. Whereas here, if I have something on the standard one, yes, I'll go into a public hospital with, you know, six people in the ward. But if I've got private, you know, uh, pro, uh, private health insurance, I might be able to get a, a private hospital with only two people in the room or something like that. But to me, if I'm... I don't care as long as I'm looked after through with the, the the right thing. I don't care how many people's in the room as long as I'm looked after mm-hmm. uh, properly. Because I hopefully I'm not in there long enough. I don't care that it's like a motel room. I'll be laid up just trying to get better. But it's uh, like you said, it's it's strange when it's aimed at these people who can't afford it, and they're only that they're the only ones who have to pay more for it. So. Well, no, I, I, honest, honestly, the the. My regular insurance, I mean, what I had what um, Mr. Obama called a Cadillac plan. I'm a middle-class person who has a rather expensive insurance plan, and it's worked well for us because of the um, you know, prescription drug benefit and stuff like that that's all going on. But um, all of a sudden, I know we're paying more. Well, all of a sudden, other people who were barely getting by now have to pay cash out of pocket when they didn't before. And then, and then uh, they people have to pay fines if they don't buy health care, which is oh. the the fines are more than the lower grade of health care that's available. I mean, it's it's really a weird thing. I mean, how is this supposed to be better? I mean, it's definitely hurting the middle class because everything's more expensive for us, and the availability of drugs, like I was talking about before. Uh, the availability for, of health care has been taken away in a lot of large part from the middle class, even though the middle class is the workhorse that pays for everything. And instead of improving the system or making a system completely like yours, they just added pages and pages and pages of regulation and and extra cost to the system. I mean, it, it didn't help at all, from what I can tell. Um uh, you know, the law was that uh, the poor, if they went to an emergency room, they had to be treated anyway. Mm. And so now these same people that were going to the emergency room for treatment are now it's being right. fined if they can't afford yeah. to buy the insurance. It just seems ridiculous. <sighs> to me. It's, uh, but I'm, uh, there's some things I'm really glad I live here. because. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't blame you there. People, people moan and groan about our system sometimes, but mm. I said, no, you go to other places to see you yes we might we might think we're hard done by but i think uh on a whole we're pretty well looked after like uh, i just can't see of any other place being as good and easy for this for medical insurance or, or just being looked after here as well like i think with my mother as well whatever drugs on that i might need i think I, there's a there's a thousand dollar cap mm-hmm. so if she goes over a thousand dollars Mm-hmm. In a year, everything else is free after that. Oh, nice. In, so, and I See, mean, over here, when you have a cap, then you have to pay everything after that. 
Yeah, well, no, we do the other <laughs> way around. I have to pay, but but you, the, the thing that always annoys me, I always reach that cap at about the twenty fifth of December. Exactly. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> then I get I get a packet of you know headache pills for 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 ten dollars free, Yay. and then it's back to square one again. But but, but I thought <laughs> at least that's good. But as I said, once you get over the the thousand dollars, but I thought that's at least you, that's manageable, isn't it? For well, because of not paying a lot for it. So at least drugs and, drugs are so but, expensive here that you would be past a thousand in your second month. Oh no! As I said, we're fairly. I think they're fairly good because most of you. It, that's why it takes such a long time to get over it. So, mm -hmm. like mum's get on a lot of different things, being being you know at ninety now she gets a lot of different things on there. So there's there's pills that are you know cholesterol things, all these all these different pills that keep you going and that. So mm -hmm. uh, and so as I said, it still takes me a while to get over the thousand dollars. But as I said, it's, it's well it, it's a it's affordable. As I said. So a lot of people here think, yes, it might be terribly expensive, but they we, we get used to having everything else. So they might not be able to buy that brand new second car, mm -hmm. but we all we all want the two car. Every family wants, it, but can't have an old one. You've got to all have always have a new one. <laughs> you've got to have the nice house. You've got to have the huge this and that. But yeah, I think that's our whole society. We all want everything now. We all want the newest and the best of things and. Sometimes when we need to save up and uh, scrape for them, we don't like that. I know it's just nature and the way. So inconvenient. Going <laughs> these days, like years ago, you you couldn't. All they want now is people to buy things, uh, whereas before you had to. You can't have people saving really because our whole society would fall to pieces. Can you imagine if you only had to buy what you want, like the iPhones? What it's ten years old now. Those ones that's probably going back to 2007 are probably still would be working. But if the hype wasn't there to change it every time a new one came out, Apple wouldn't be there by now, would they? And neither would Samsung, because you really don't need all these a lot of the times. So it's just you get, oh, I can't live without that new device. And I get sucked into that. And I'm <laughs> always the first one out there buying the, the new this and that. But when I look back, I thought, well, did I have to have it? No, it didn't make my life really that. But you just have to have all the, the new things. You don't keep the old things like you used to. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember specifically President Obama, he had a speech and he was telling everybody that it was basically their patriotic duty to run up their credit cards and stop putting so much money back because after 2008 and everything's kind of hitting the fan, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, people start saving more. And started pulling money out of the economy and started saving more, you know, to save their families, basically, for the rainy day. And he basically told them, don't do that. You know, you need to put that money out there to work and circulate. And I'm thinking, I'm just thinking, the president is telling you not to save your money? You know, because the whole the whole world now is set up on conspicuous consumption. I mean, just keep throwing your money out there and don't save anything for yourself. But the thing is, though, if you're middle class, nobody will bail you out like they will if you're poor or if you're rich and you have enough, uh, you know, stuff. But it, it just seems the way we're set up. I've always said that you've heard me talk about this before. The middle class are basically the, you know, the cash cows of the society. Mm. And the one party is taking everything away and giving it to, you know, uh, illegal immigrants and people like that. And the other one's taking it all away from the middle class and giving it to the rich people. So, <laughs> How, if you're middle class, you know, they don't want you to be on any kind of disability or anything like that because you've got to keep, you know, producing the cash, you know, that they can use for all their little programs they want to do. You know? Remember that thing we had the global financial crisis that, well, what our government did at that time. So they they weren't really suffering here. They sort of missed most of that, but yeah. wanted people started getting worried and were saving so what our government did at the time, they gave everybody, every tax paying person in the country, they gave them a thousand dollars to spend. <laughs> that was that was uh, that was somebody did a calculation one time and talked about if they took the money that they used to promote the passage of Obamacare. Yes. That how many hundred thousand they could give each American? Yeah, and then so you know, and put that in a medical savings account for them. 
<laughs> and, but that's what they, they, yeah, it they, was, they it's actually, funny. But they actually gave us money. The oh, I know, gave, yeah. And, um, um, but the, the thing was, then it comes around to tax time, right. and then they said, we gave you $1,000. It's bumped you over a different tax rate. You owe us more. So I thought, yeah, that's nice. it got you out there, but they said it went on to what you actually earned. So it was still, it was a gift, yes. but it was still from, it was classed as, yeah, but that's still like $1,000 you've earned, but we just happened to give you it back. So, mm -hmm. but they said, don't save it, spend it. Oh, yeah. Get out there and spend that money. Be a whole lot better <laughs> off. Yeah, the other world will be a better place. The whole, idea of the collective that you're not really supposed to take care of your family you're supposed to mm. give it all away because that way it's out there working and then don't worry if anything happens the government will take care of you you know so it's you know it's kind of like I, i'm sorry i've seen them lie to us too many times and i simply do not trust them i mean they're well, they're getting ready to do it to me again i mean mm. you know <laughs> at least they're wanting to it's, it's, and that and that's what I, I always do. I always assume that by the time I'm going to retire, I'll have nothing, mm -hmm. and then I won't be disappointed. Because if I don't, if I have something, I'll be really happy. But you, I, we always assume that there's going to be something comes in that's going to mess up your idea. But if you don't expect to have anything by the time you retire, you think, well, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Because I'm I'm convinced by the time I do, there'll be something like that round the corner that. I'm going to retire. And when I pick the date to retire, that month will bring in something that, oh, no, no, you can't get access to your pension fund for at least an, uh, 10 years after you retire. Mm -hmm. Well, then, yeah, uh, but, that, but but you have that 55 retirement community thing that we don't have around here. It costs us, you know, $10,000 a month to do something like that. What's that? So, Although you said it when you were 55, you could go into a retirement community. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. I'm already there. Yeah. I well, I mean, but, but what I'm saying is for us, for us to do that, it would cost us probably $10,000 a month to do that. I mean, out what, of what? our own money there, we don't have anything automatic like that. We have to, we have to pay cash money and you just can't afford that. Oh, no, no. What I was saying with the retirement village, it's not a, we don't get anything for it. It's just that you have villages where you can, you can go in there and you still pay a fortune to get in there. It's not um, free. Oh, okay. don't give us anything. But I was just saying that they have these rules that you're not allowed to go in there unless if you're under 55. No, oh, okay. because you're going to you're going to be rowdy and too noisy. Well, I'm sure I'm 55. I can be rowdy and noisy if I want to. Yeah, go in there and ride around and ride your horse around the halls, and you know, it's like you know, people like take motorcycles inside instead of taking a motorcycle inside, you'd be riding your horse around inside the halls and everything. Uh, well, that's right. I don't have any horse. I have don't have a horse now. So oh, you don't have a horse gone. now. I'm sorry. I've got Charlie. Uh, I sold Charlie. This is somebody at work wanted another one, so she bought my other one. So I was really happy because I know she'll look after him and I know yeah. where he is. So I thought, well, that just worked out fine because he's not just just sat in. Well, he is just sat in a paddock, but he's doing a job helping somebody else, looking after, being company for another horse, and keeping the grass down. And that's uh, mm -hmm. that's what she wanted him for. So I said, well, that's fine. That's good. So because I don't mind looking after, it, but. I, I, I'll love having a horse if I can ride it, but it's mm -hmm. not, not that much fun when you can't ride when it's sort of not in a fit, but she's actually been riding him, just walking him and yeah. not doing too much on it. Cause I said, it's not, uh, it's not too bad as long as you don't push him too much. So, mm -hmm. but so, so I'd have to borrow somebody's horse to go around the retirement village. You see, so, well, yeah, uh, but, but, but just, uh, just for that stunt, it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> but yeah, like you're saying about your 55, like here, well, now I think my my legal age to claim a, a retirement is 68. I okay, so they raised it up. Yeah, but 68. But, is, but I think with whatever you've got in our superannuation, what you've saved, your retirement fund, what do you call it, your K401 or something? Don't yeah, what 401k. You call it? Oh, yeah, I've got it back to front. Your 401k, I think we can, I think there's a, I think my age is still about 55. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to access 30% of it as a pension. Okay. But you can't get it all until you're 65. 65. But okay. then you but then you don't get the state pension until you're 68. Okay. But then if you get if you've gotten too much money you get nothing anyway. So I'm hoping I'm in a, a financial enough situation that I'll I'll I've got enough to, so I don't don't need any of the state ones. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm hoping. So but, <laughs> that, 
the better way sometimes it's better if you've got nothing at least you'll get something on there but some people here they strive to have nothing spend it all well if you've got a lot why why worry about not getting a pension if you've got that much money that you don't qualify for and i thought well, well, it's something. Uh, it's it, it's something that you've paid into all this time. Yes. It's a, imagine imagine you paid for a car all these years, and you were mm. expecting to get it at the end, but then they just didn't give you the car because you just had too much money. Mm. That get then, you a little. That, that would get you a little upset. Uh, but then again, I can understand like people like my mother when which when she worked, she just came at the end of it. So the the things that the four hundred one k like their equivalent there would only a pittance that wouldn't mm. do so she qualifies for a pension right. but people like myself have well been had probably by the time we'll have had 30 years with it and mm. i've come in late to it whereas now the the people now who are in the 20s they're having their whole working life to it so they should have quite a lot because it's well here it's they have to pay nine percent of my salary is mm -hmm. that again so they pay that in so well, that's really good nine percent of your salary again is something you can't touch mm -hmm. so if you can't have a decent amount out of that there's uh, there's something wrong and that, well that's that's that, the, that's what's happening with us is that they want to take away what we've earned mm. You know. Yeah, you fought on K, the, the, the taking away what you put because you put extra in it to yeah. support. Yeah, we have we we have a, with, through the uh, government we have what's called a thrift savings plan, which is operates a little differently than than the four hundred one k does. But it's 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 a matching and then you know investment type of a thing, and mm -hmm. um and like you say, uh, that's supposed to be our money that's in there. But I've waited to uh, maybe retire and suddenly they send me an IOU because they took it all out and gave it to some uh, program somewhere or something. And then they say, I'm sorry, Mister Holbrook, we haven't got enough money to pay you, so bad luck. Right. Too bad. You know, and so the thing is, though, leaving individuals destitute, they have absolutely no trouble with that. The government has no trouble. And of course, middle class people have no one to turn around and steal from. We're last in line. You know, mm, so. that's, that's right. You can't go. Well, we're, we're here. That's that's it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're the we are totally the end of the line. <laughs> But it's it's funny though it's like that everywhere though isn't it like we have that here you have the 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 poorer neighborhoods and the supermarkets and the shops the poorer neighborhoods the prices are higher there the more affluent neighborhoods have the same shop the same supermarket but the prices are cheaper there well the re the reason they're cheaper there is because the volume that those neighborhoods do and so oh but the vol the volume is but that's the other way around the cheaper right. the the lesser area would have the bigger volume so that yeah well, that's right you said make more money on it because was the yeah, higher they're trying, end they're trying, if, if if they're buying less in the area then then they want more per unit you know whereas uh exactly. you know in the like for instance walmart the other day i found something at walmart and we just now had our little local store to actually uh change where they're getting their food from Huh? Bleep, bleep, bleep. You said, you said Walmart. Bleep, bleep, oh, oh, bleep. Oh, oh, I forgot. I forgot. That, that, that is now a four-letter word, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but anyway, what, what happened was this: there was this, uh, they changed management, they changed the franchise of the kind of store they are. And they were telling us how great it was going to be. And now this, the sourcing was going to come something that was better from an area that was better for our community and all this and how everything was going to be cheaper. Prices in this little local store have just gone up. I mean, you know, and some of them have gone up by 50%. You know, for small items, adding 50 cents to a dollar item, that's, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, kind of the last straw for me the other day, there was this particular ice cream. And they have the same ice cream there and at Walmart. And there was a $2.50 difference. It was more expensive at this little, you know, this smaller local store than it is at Walmart. So mm. once it gets to the point to where you can save fifty dollars <laughs> by going to Walmart, yeah. that to changes the balance of power because we've really patronized this small local store here. It's our it's our you know, it's our neighborhood area store and we've really patronized them, but the prices have gone up and up and up just over the last year. And now they're pricing us out of there. And so now I stop on the way home from work at Walmart in the middle of the night and get it for two dollars and fifty cents cheaper. When you translate that over several items, you're saving fifty, maybe a hundred dollars by going to Walmart. That changes the equation completely. <laughs> Well, I must admit, I, the way I do my shopping, I don't shop for what I want. I just shop for what 
what I like the prices of now. <laughs> if I do, but as I said, if I see something that I say, oh, okay, that's two dollars forty nine, no special. But then if I see it the next week, it's fifty percent saving, a dollar twenty or something. I'll, I'll like that. I'll get it then. <laughs> and if it lasts a long time, but I'll do that with cereals because you have sure. breakfast cereals. They'll say, you know, what, eight hundred and five gram. Uh, thing uh, Kellogg's thing for 805 gram and here it will be 899 but then you just wait and then the same one it'll be 499 in a week's time so I get it when it's 499 yeah, and if you're so, ahead if you're ahead on stocking your food then you can watch for those deals and get them when they show up and, and if it's not I bet get something else there's other ones that will be but I never I, I shop because and I hate it when they say Everyday special price. Everyday so special saying, price. <laughs> so you're saying, but it's like a big sticker saying, oh, so you're just telling me you're screwing me today because it's no discount on it. But some people just don't, they just see a big tag. And like I was seeing the other, oh, two for $7. That's great. And I said, yeah, but there were two forty nine each last week. No, you know, it's a penny, said, two pennies cheaper, you know, more but expensive. As said, but as I said, well, no, with as I said, the two, uh, two for seven dollars. Right. As I said, it was uh, it was two dollars, uh, two dollars forty nine mm. each. Okay. So, yeah, said, it's like five dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, I said so. It's dearer. And yeah. then then oh, then there was this one that said, oh, it's two for fourteen. I said, yeah, <laughs> but look, last week there were five dollars each. And like the and people just and I said don't get that hey the and I've said to some people that go oh buy this it's eight dollars I said just go around to the other shop the other supermarket on the other side I said that one that's eight ninety nine the five dollars round there oh and they can't be bothered but I thought some and it's just ridiculous some of the the things and then one week then they show super great special yeah so it's dearer than it was last week. Mm -hmm. And, and, but the, what I hate mostly is when they, what they do and they tend to do, say like that 805 gram Kellogg's, the, the, the breakfast cereal, what they have a tendency doing here, they'll, it'll be 8.99, 8.99, 8.99, then it'll be 3.99 on special, 3.99 for two weeks, right? Then it'll go back up to 8.99. But all of a sudden, when it's gone back up to eight ninety nine, now it's seven hundred and eighty gram. Mm -hmm. Then it comes down to six seven ninety nine or six. But people don't realise it. And the same same thing we had these were things called wagon wheels when I was a kid. They're huge. They seem to keep shrinking and shrinking, and they're getting like the size of an Oreo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but oh, yeah. People don't see that these things that used to be like the blocks of chocolate as well. Yeah, the but yeah, they're the same size that way. But the thickness has gone the light way for thin, and they've gone from three seventy-five gram to about two hundred and fifty. Yeah, and they've been the same. People don't notice. That. I mean, so, if you take one pickle out of every jar, then you can <laughs> you can make a tremendous amount of money without anybody noticing. Uh, I had a picture I took several years ago uh, at at a Walmart. They had this um, price up there that was. Um, you know, they used to compare the older price and the new price, and it said the old price was seven dollars and something, and now you save even more, eight dollars and something. And what oh. what what they had done was mixed mixed up the two prices. But anyway, I got a picture of that, and I put that on my Flickr account, and that picture has appeared all over the internet. I mean, <laughs> there are these corporate greed sites, anti-Walmart sites, and what they do is just put the picture up there and then link back to my picture on the Flickr site. I mean, and that picture is everywhere, but it, it's a legitimate picture where they did it wrong and put the higher price that is what you're supposed to be paying now. And it was a great picture, and I put it on there, and I think I did a six-word story. You know, the six-word stories like Hemingway won a bet with a six-word telling a story oh, in six words okay well they have this six word story thing on there and i think mine said um mathematics genius finds lucrative new position or something like that is the way it come out you know because they you know and they actually got all kinds of stuff but i'm serious that picture is all over the place now um you know and they all they do is just link back to the site but that that uh, that picture is i mean it's been out there for 10 years it's really funny i had somebody on the radio the yesterday that said uh they were saying 
get the, 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 he, he got fined for speeding. It mm-hmm. was a, a, an 80 kilometer zone. He got done for speeding, but on the citation or whatever it said, it says, uh, what's it? Speed limit, 80 kilometers, actual speed, 79. So we got fined for going one for on the second. They said, how does that work? It says, how do I get fined for speeding in an 80 kilometer zone? And where it says the speed clocked at that the, the the radar clocked me at was at seventy nine. <laughs> well, you got to so make. They, I guess the government has to make they money. Just don't get up. <laughs> they, yeah, it's a, but it seems like this. So how does that work? It's a bit like yours. Yeah, every day you're saving price, and it's just it's dearer than it was before on that. But it's just mm-hmm. it does annoy me when the, the the try to do that, but. You've just got. Uh, I don't mind because I think we should we should be healthier and that because of the cutting down our consumption of food by so much. You know, it's, it's so much lighter to to pick things up because, as I said, the always cutting things down and never increase never increase the the sizes on the, or if they do, you know, oh, what they're going to do with it? They're going to do something to uh, to make it. Like you said, one onion out of thing. You imagine how much how many other jars of onions they can get out of that and how many sales without mm-hmm. that. And so oh, people don't like putting the price. It's yeah, we'll just shave a little bit of this off and do that. So That's the way they do it. You know something? I think our 51st episode has been going for about an hour now. <laughs> I think so, because we just started beforehand, but I always forget. So I thought if it's nine o'clock, I know we've definitely done we've definitely done an hour if we, if it's uh, if it's the, the, the normal nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. So that is true. It's, so now I'll just say this: I will be here next week, mm-hmm. but the week after I won't be. I'm, well, I'm going to our version of Florida, uh, Brisbane, mm-hmm. just for work for the Tuesday night or okay. Tuesday Tuesday night, and then I'm flying back Wednesday night. But I've got a four o'clock flight in the afternoon, and it's a two and a half hour flight back from there. Then fighting through the. The, the traffic to get home so I'll, I'll won't be there in two weeks time but we can talk about i'll remind you next week but just in case i forget mm-hmm. so okay. if we i was going to say if i had the means we could do it by via skype on the, an ipad but i don't have the means to do it from that so i don't know I, I can i can do it but i can't get you into the conversation there i don't know how we would oh record that so well what you can do is just it's just just keep looking over to one side and act like i'm over there but they can't hear me and then they'll just think it we had technical difficulty <laughs> no 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 i'll just go okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, what's the other oh no yeah that's exactly right jeff and the, i'm missing something what are you missing? <laughs> And just do that for an hour and say, oh, well, it looks like the clock's on the wall. Yes, it's time for us to go now. So. <laughs> so not, one thing one fun. thing I'd, I'd like to remind everybody of is that on Facebook, we do have a, uh, a new page. Um, and we actually have more than 100 likes on the page already. So that's that, that's, wor- that's working out really well. So anyway, uh, just uh, Facebook.com slash The Weekly Catch-Up. And the video, yes, the video versions of the show will be uh, made available on that. And uh, I can guarantee you that there will be no politicians this week clicking on the like button either. <laughs> I would say probably not. Well, they've all been hacked anyway, so. <laughs> oh, that that that's right. Yes. So, but it's you know it's, it's strange that if the Russians can't make our give us extra views, like <laughs> do that. Well, uh, well our... I don't know. I think we have to have some kind of back channel talks with them, and you know, if we want something done, you know, that's that's, that's what'll happen. But anyway, everybody that's remember that Walmart is a four little word now. You have to be careful with that. That's right. Yes, don't don't up, don't upset them as as well, or else. Uh, and I I left to try that somewhere else. Do something else to say. Oh, you're nothing but a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how dare you call me a Walmart? <laughs> oh, it's. Uh, I won't say what the, what do they used to say it was uh, melon farmer mm. in the, in the films, didn't they? Uh, That's when not that, in- I mean, I, I, I don't remember the use of that here, although, although it could have been somewhere else, because no, no. there are probably melon farmers around here. <laughs> no, but it, it happens a lot. It, just when you at home, just have a look in the uh, the mirror and just call yourself a silly, rotten melon farmer and just look at the lips and what it me what what it matches up to in the real world because they never said that but that's what they dub over the lips oh. when but it says you're a stupid rotten melon farmer okay, <laughs> it, okay. It, just, just go, it just go it took me ages i thought 
not very aggressive there. Why is the, what are these melon farm? Why are they picking on melon farmers? But it, it had nothing to do with that. So right. anyway, we'll leave you <laughs> on the Walmart and the melon farmers this week and catch you all next week. And bye for now. Thank you so much for listening. Links for a free subscription, feedback, and everything else we do is at holbrooknewmedia.com. You can find all things Jeff Blanchard at jeffblanchard.com.